Victor. And in his next fight, he shook off early problems to beat Jesse Ferguson. And this would start a six-fight win streak. It was a win streak that included a victory over journeyman Mike Dixon. He had Dixon down, but had to go to 10 rounds to win a decision. Again, things went south in an important match when former champ Tony Tubbs had Bruce down early and then handled him to win a 10-round decision. It was a loss that led to a lot of reassessment and some changes in training and his mental approach to the game. He hopes it all works out because he knows there's still good possibilities out there starting tonight. This fight means a lot to me. You know, this fight means that this fight is, is, is one step closer to, to, to everyone recognizing that Bruce Sullivan is back in the picture and I'm ready, you know, and I want to make some of this money. Meanwhile, Alexander Popov is does not only give himself a chance to win this fight, he really feels this is an unbelievable opportunity. It's like he said, we fell in a bucket of slop and we came out smelling like a rose. Let's talk then, Al, about the AutoZone keys to victory. Well, this is the first time I've ever did this. Guess what? They're exactly the same. Popov, the jab, Selden, the jab, Popov, the right hand, Selden, the right hand. It'll be simple to go back and check these out. So that is the matchup. Let's talk about the IBF rules, a little bit different than the Jersey rules. Yeah, there is no three knockout rule and no standing eight. And the uh, doctor can stop the bout. The uh, winner gets 10, loser 9 or less, and the rest you follow on down are in fact the same. So that sets up our main event, Popoff and Selden. And let's meet them officially now with Michael Buff. Ladies and gentlemen, Top Rank Incorporated, in association with the undisputed King of Beers, Budweiser present the featured bout of the evening. This bout is sanctioned by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board, Boxing Commissioner Larry Hazard Sr., Chairman Jerry Gormley, Board Members Gary Shaw and Richard Harrison, Deputy Commissioner Lawrence Wallace, Supervisor at ringside for the IBF, Robert W. Lee Jr., Three physicians at ringside. Chief physician, Dr. Frank B. Doggett. Attending physicians, Dr. Charles Wilson and Dr. Eric Wormser. The timekeeper is Roosevelt Gilbert, counting for the knockdown seconds. Alternate referee, Benji Estevez. The three judges scoring this bout on a 10-point must system are Frank Brunette, Vinny Renoni, and John Stewart. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from Donald J. Trump's Taj Mahal Casino Resort here in Atlantic City, uh, let's get ready to rumble! 12 rounds of boxing for the IBF Intercontinental Heavyweight Championship. The referee for this contest is James Condon. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the blue trunks with white trim, weighing in at 246 pounds, he's from Novocherkosk, Russia, with an undefeated record of 11-0-1. Eight KOs to his credit. Ladies and gentlemen, the challenger, Alexander Sasha Popov. And his opponent, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the black trunks with gold trim, weighing in at 231 pounds. From right here in Atlantic City, New Jersey, he brings a professional record of 24 victories with 20 KOs against only three defeats. Ladies and gentlemen, the defending IBF Intercontinental Heavyweight Champion, the Atlantic City Express, Bruce Gentlemen, good evening. You are boxing for the IBF Intercontinental Heavyweight Championship. Protect yourself at all times. There'll be no punching on the break, gentlemen. This will be a fair one. Respect the bell. Good luck. God bless you both. Touch gloves. So there's a look at Alexander Popov, and no small lad he at 6'4 and 246, and Bruce Selden, who comes in a few pounds heavier than he has in the past, and he feels that it is a solid four pounds heavier at 231. It's as heavy as he has ever been for a fight, but says he's been working on his cardiovascular. He sparred with Riddick Bow. He said it gave him a lot of confidence, and he's ready to get started again. You see the knockout ratio, Selden with a little better percentage. Neither of these men are one-punch knockout artists. They've gotten their sure knockouts, but there's the right hand by Popov. 
very similar styles by each of these men. They will both want to get the jab going. We've seen Seldon many times before. He's got a very quick jab. There's the right by Popov. Popov. He has been able to get so far, at least, get the lead right hand in a little bit. It's a pretty quick punch, too. And remember, Tony Tubbs decked Seldon early with it. Bruce has been down early against Jose Rebalta, and then he got up to beat him, of course, and then against uh, Bo, didn't get up to beat him, and Tubbs got up and went 10, but lost the fight. Popoff has been fighting in the United States since September of last year. So he's actually only had three fights in the United States, this being his fourth. But he made a way stop in Helsinki after leaving Russia. It was an important fight because he beat Mike Dixon, who, uh, lost, who also lost to Bruce Seldon. And we saw Dixon against M Ray Mercer. Ironically, Popov, who was supposed to fight Lionel Butler in that card in Boise that we showed you in Ringside Report, that didn't come off, was also offered Ray Mercer on February 6th on the undercard of Bo Dokes. So they decided, no, we're not going to take that. And then this came up, and this was much more to their liking. Well, this is the fight they really believe that they have a legitimate chance to win. And I think they probably accurately so thought that getting in with Ray Mercer might be a little bit premature. Mercer with power and with uh, with a great chin. Thinking Popov needed a uh, fight against a tough guy, and of course he's in there against a tough guy in Bruce Seldon, who's doing some pretty good work with the jab right now. The hook may be the, the difference in this bout for Seldon. He's got a better left hook than Popov, and he has been known to deck people with that hook. And he's landed it a couple times. Bruce Seldon's making a very good move, and if he follows up on it, he's dipping down to his left and getting himself in good position to crank that left hook. And after watching his first round, I'm more and more convinced that the hook could be the key for Bruce Seldon because that's the one punch that he has. I didn't put it in the keys to victory because it didn't seem to be one that he would be able to use as effectively. He can get that in against Popov. So a pretty even first round. Seldon probably did a little bit the better. We'll be back. Right. We start the second round now, and whether or not Alexander Popov understood the advice of his corner is of some question, but they were saying that Seldon is looking to load up on the hook, so you got to keep the right hand up. There's the jab the last time. They noticed what I noticed, I guess, that the Seldon hook, the hook was a potentially good weapon. Seldon has opened a little cut on the bridge of the nose. Actually, it's right on the nose. Uh, Popov. Wild right hand by Popov, and he'll pay the price for that. Well, Seldon tried to counter him with the left hook, in that case he couldn't. What Popov was effective with once or twice in the first round is that short right. There it is. Yeah. That's right. the point. That's the punch that Bruce Seldon's had some trouble with in the past. gloves for the most part. It's the right idea though.